Well, many of you out there may be huge sports fans. I know I'm one of them. You get inspired by these wonderful athletes who you also know sacrificed uh, many years of dedication, practice to be elite in their sports. Now, you can respect these athletes and uh, really appreciate uh, the commitment it takes to become a great athlete. But what if you also, on top of that, also have a, a disability uh, on top of your goals of becoming an athlete? Uh, we're going to be speaking to one such athlete. Vanessa Murphy is a, a Canadian athlete who uh, broke through these limitations. She's visiting right now Korea to attend the International Blind Sports Federation World Championships, which are being held in Seoul this week. And joining us live in this studio, uh, Vanessa, thank you very much for joining us. Oh, thank you. It's a pleasure and a great honor. Thanks for having me here. For our listeners' benefit, uh, could you just start off by introducing yourself briefly? Sure. Uh, my name's Ness. I hail from Salt Spring, which is a small island in BC, Canada. And um, I guess a little about myself, well, I'm tall, I like to have short spiky hair, and at the moment I <laughs> happen to have a checkerboard pattern on the side of yep. my head that's colored red for Canada. <laughs> it looks nice. Uh, <laughs> Uh, how, how did you decide to, I suppose, get involved in sports and become an athlete? Maybe you we'll walk us through that? Yeah, sure. Um, okay, so when you start out in life, you don't generally think, hey, I'm going to be a Paralympian and right. uh, you know, take sports that seriously. Um, what I found that uh, through, through my childhood, um, I was really interested in sports, but a lot of them weren't accessible for me. I started off playing tennis and mm. being visually impaired with partial sight would play outdoors and go totally blind. So I kind of shied away from sport um, until I started going to a gym, which um, you know really worked for me because I was in control of my workouts and to the extent, when I say really worked, became quite addictive. <laughs> right. Uh, the sports that you're involved in, um, weightlifting as well as uh, you're involved in some of the field sports, right? Yeah, that's right. So I'm actually a powerlifter. Um, okay. And powerlifting involves three disciplines, squat, bench press, and deadlift that combine to give you a total. Um, and that score is then calculated against your opponents in your weight class. Uh, the other discipline is athletics, in which I uh, do shot put, javelin, and discus. Wow. Crazily enough, they let blind people throw things. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, it's one thing to specialize in one sport, whether you're a power lifter, which is, of course, a very different thing from, let's say, bodybuilding or, yep. or Olympic weightlifting. Yep. Uh, it, it, but you're, you're also involved in track and field and athletics. Isn't that a challenge, or is it, does it go <laughs> hand in hand for you? Um, I, I think uh, if you look up the dictionary under Ness Murphy, it says equals challenge. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and that's sort of something that I, I you know, pride myself on doing is that um, when I see something that I think I can possibly do if I worked hard at it, the, the drive is there to, to push myself to see how far I mm. can excel in it. So doing powerlifting, um, I was fortunate enough to excel to, to quite a high degree to be a world champion and, and hold that, that record for several years. And in doing that, um, someone recommended that shot put is something that can go hand in hand. Right. Um, I'm here to tell you it doesn't exactly go hand yeah. in hand. <laughs> There's a whole lot of technicalities that happen in field sports. Um, but finding that out meant that I was just kind of roped in and uh, completely addicted because suddenly you realize it's not just about your strength, it's about mm. your balance and your form and, and whatnot. Right, because you, you do associate some of these uh, sports like the shot put or the discus where you do have to be pretty muscular, you do have to be big, but there is certainly an element of coordination and power involved uh, as opposed to powerlifting where it's really more about the brute strength, right? Yeah, I mean, to, to be honest, uh, what I'm going through with my coach at the moment is uh, I, I stand up to go, to go throw and the, mm. you know, I, the, the phrase that gets said is, Ness, stop trying, just relax and yeah. throw. Stop putting effort in because, of course, being a powerlifter, I'm used to giving it my, my all and then grunting and wanting to really put in. And every time I do that, you lose that, that wonderful dance that is the, the technical skill. Apparently, you've done pretty well at these games. Can you uh, tell us some about? <laughs> uh, yeah, actually, this is um, these games. Uh, not only the fact that they're the first time um, being held in Seoul um, is quite an auspicious mm. um, fact, but also for me, it's a comeback. I had a severe back injury, so ah. coming back into competing and competing in two disciplines has 
been amazing. And then my results, well, yeah, I'm pretty proud. I went back uh, to powerlifting and I won silver in powerlifting and bronze in bench press and took out um, a world record in deadlift and wow. actually broke it a second time during the event. Weight class? Uh, weight class is 90 kilo weight class. I weighed uh, 86.4 kilos. Wow. That's Powerlifting is actually one of my favorite sports, and you just you're amazed at <laughs> the, the guys who are able to get up on the platform, give it their all. Yeah. Risk injury. I don't know if it was a lumbar yeah, strain. Yeah, it was actually. Or, okay. Yeah. And so you do that, and maybe if you are someone who's just competing or someone who's just working out in the gym, you know how difficult it is, and you. I, I know you know this very well. Often you see these lifters, they're checking themselves in the mirror, they're, they're videotaping their form, yep. whether they're going below parallel or not. Or, hey, you know the, the terminology. Yeah, I'm sure, impressed. sure. But <laughs> how challenging is that if you are visually impaired? Uh, it's a lot harder than I sometimes let on, I think. Um, being totally blind, doing squat, it's incredibly challenging yeah. to maintain your balance and go down straight without tipping the bar. Um, and also learning your, your level. I was so nervous that I wouldn't be getting low enough that I, I went extra low and, and it was kind of said to me, Ness, you need to stop having a cup of tea down there. Like, you know, get, get yourself grass. up. Yeah, right. exactly. Um, I, I find the hardest one is, is squat for me. Okay. Um, deadlift, uh, once I feel where the bar is, I know I can just get down there and rip mm. it up. Um, and, you know, really it's about that coordination. And, and a lot of people listen to heavy metal music mm. or, or loud right. music. And I can't have that because that throws off my balance um, when I'm racking up. So that's that's something that's different, yeah.